Hey guys, uh, welcome to this tutorial on the new Pilot Client Web UI and some CPDLC changes that are coming into effect uh, hopefully later this week. I wanted to do a video before we release these changes though because it significantly affects the way that you log in to CPDLC. Um, currently I'm set up in the development environment which is accessible to developers and administration. Um, once the changes are pushed to the production environment, they'll be available to all users. Um, so starting out here, uh, we'll go to the Pilot Client Web UI. And you can notice that uh, there's been some changes to the look and feel of the, uh, the portal a little bit. Um, we have obviously some ad additional changes uh, coming in the next few revisions. But right now, we've added a border. Uh, we've changed the font and the cursor is now a cyan cursor which closely matches the real world 787 MFD. Um, notice the buttons are all cyan and the reason for that is that I, you need an active pilot client connection in order for this portal to work. And so I have the flight simulator open right now and I'm going to go to PauseCon and actually before I do that uh, a lot of questions around this you always have to have this launcher running. And it says use development environment, using development environment here because I'm on the development environment, but uh, yours shouldn't have that. But you should always have the launcher client open in order to establish a PauseCon connection. This thing is basically like typing in, typing in your username and password. Uh, as long as this is open, it will authenticate you to the network. So I'm going to close that out. We're going to go ahead and connect. Um, today I filed a flight plan using... Um, 237 Yankee Victor as my call sign, November 237 Yankee Victor. Um, so it's really important that you, you change the call sign here for your ADSB to whatever you're going, you want to be identified as. Um, the ADSB call sign in real general aviation aircraft is uh, hard coded into the transponder ADSB system, essentially. Uh, so that a user can't actually change that, like a real pilot can't change that in a, in a G, general aviation aircraft. When you get into the airliners and jets, you can change that to reflect what your current call sign and flight number is. So American 12, let's say going you know JFK to Los Angeles, you put that into your ADSB call sign, and then on the way back, maybe it's American 13, you're going to want to put that into your ADS-B call sign, and you're going to want to change that each time. For general aviation, as I said, you can leave it alone. Just put it in once, as long as that's what you plan on using. So I'm going to go ahead and log in. And once I'm logged in, you can change your ADS-B call sign by simply going to the settings and just changing it there. You don't have to log out or log back in. Um, that's important to note because uh, the CPDLC system now will validate to ensure that what you're logging in is is the same as the ADSB call sign that you've logged into the network with. All right, so now we're coming to the ATC page. And this is where you establish a CPDLC connection. Uh, this will be really important to talking and communicating with air traffic control. We're implementing this very slowly because there's a lot to this system. It's going to take users a while to learn. It's also going to take a while to make sure that it works in both the air traffic control client and in the pilot client web UI. I'll tell you straight straight away that the, ATC, the pilot client web UI has more features available currently than the air traffic control client. The air traffic control client is currently only capable of sending a contact message, whereas the ATC client or the um, pilot client web UI is capable of sending a various host of different messages and you'll see that here in a second. So the login page that I just clicked on allows you to log in and this is this is very it validates a lot of different things so it's very important that you get the information that you're inputting here correct. So the login to is the authority for which you're logging into. It's typically an FIR name of the departure FIR that you're departing from or in some cases there's a different name and I'll show you how to find the different login um, for the places, really it's only the United States and I'll show you how to do that in a second. So um, the flight number is your call sign. It's the call sign that you filed a flight plan for. Uh, so in this case, I filed a flight plan for November 237 Yankee Vector and 
it's on file. So that's what I'm going to use to log in here. Now, the flight we're doing today is from Billings, Montana to Sher Sheridan, Wyoming. Uh, if you scroll down, this page has a lot of uh, useful information. And one of the, the most useful for this case is the CPDLC login. And it tells you KUSA. So the United States, instead of doing it by FIR, uh, they decided to group the, all their FIRs together, excluding Alaska, Hawaii, and San Juan. They group it under KUSA, and that's the login for the entire United States. That doesn't apply for the rest of the world, though. So the rest of the world, for example, I'm here in Dublin, in Ireland, and EIDW is the airport identifier. So what am I going to use to log into CPDLC here? Well, you're going to use the FIR name, which is Shannon. So Shannon FIR UIR is E-I-S-N, and that's what I would use right here in the login window. And um, so if you go up to, say, Belfast, because that's part of the UK, you would have to use Scottish FIR, which is E-G-P-X. So that's how you get the login. And typically, not always, but typically we'll have the login posted here as long as you file a flight plan, but you need a flight plan for CPDLC. So you got to file a flight plan. And if you file a flight plan, typically we'll have the login already published here on this uh, flight plan briefing page. If it's not published there, you have to go to Sky Vector or you have to use SimBrief to figure out which FIR your departure aerodrome is in. So if you go to London, for example, any London airport is going to be London FIR, which is EGTT, and that will be the login that you use. But as I said today, we're going to be using KUSA because we're in Billings, Montana, which is in Salt Lake uh, Center, A ARTCC, which is in the United States. Okay, so now it's time to log in. We're going to use KUSA. And as soon as I tab or go to the next uh, field, you can see this network ready. That's telling me that that is a valid uh, login. If you do not see the network ready, that means that it's not going to be a valid login that you sent. And as soon as you submit the incorrect login, you're going to get a message, an error message from the server saying it's not valid. So this is a preemptive validation. It's telling you if it says network ready, that's good. If it doesn't say anything, that means it's not a valid login. So it already should be hinting you that you have something incorrect and that you're going to need to go change that. Uh, but KUSA is the correct. So we're going to go my call sign here, which is November 237 Yankee Victor. And then you can pretty much leave everything else blank. Um, I mean, if you can put that on, I, I don't think it really does anything right now. Um, and then press send. It will start sending. You'll hear an audible tone. It says connecting. And then a few, second a few seconds later, it's going to say connected. And login blanks out. 237 Yankee Victor is there. Connection established. Active Center KUSA. So we are officially logged into CPDLC. A new message appeared. Let's go see what that says. It says ATC uplink established. Uh, this is an automated message to confirm CPDLC contact with KUSA. So that's good. We're going to roger that, which basically just confirms that you got the message. Nothing more. And then you can go to, once you've confirmed a message, or let's say you looked at it, but you want to review it, you can go to the review side of the CPDL or the uh, Pilot Cloud Web UI. And you'll see your ATC uplinks. So ATC uplinks means it's uplinking from the ground to the air, up to the airplane. So uplink. A downlink means it's coming from the aircraft to the ATC facility. So the uplink says, there's the message that we just received. If I return and I actually exit and go back to review... So I'm sorry. View and go to downlinks. There's the Roger that I sent. Now, one big change that just I you just saw this change that you know you may be familiar. You may use the Pilot Client Web UI a lot in the past. You used to be able to just click on the button to return. That if I click now on review, it doesn't do anything. You have to use the return button to get back to the previous menu, and then you have to press exit. 
and that will allow you to get back to the previous menu. It's a little cumbersome, but that's actually how the real system works. So we wanted to reflect the real system a little bit more in detail. Um, so now that I've received, uh, you know, my confirmation that I'm connected, typically most the way it previously worked, you would receive the squawk code now. Notice I haven't received any squawk codes. There's nothing in that. So what do I have to do? Well, whoa, there's a ton of new features available here. Now, it allows you to request a new flight level from ATC. It allows you to request a new route. It allows you to request a new speed. Um, all this doesn't really work yet. I mean, it's it's sending messages to the server. The server's receiving those messages, but the air traffic control client cannot cap is not capable of displaying it to the controller yet. So when you send a message like a level request right now, it's going to return a message that says the authority is unable to process your request or something to that effect, basically saying that you're it's unable to process right now because the air traffic control client cannot receive it. So the only thing working right now is the clearance request. So now I want to get my squawk code before I depart. And in the future, you it won't just be your squawk code, it will be your entire IFR clearance that you'll receive. So I go to clearance request, I press request clearance, no need for free text, I'm just requesting my squawk code. And uh, even in the future, I think you would only include in free text, maybe some sort of, maybe you wanted a change of altitude of some, some sort. You may put there requesting flight level 360 instead of flight level 340. Typically, you're just going to leave that blank. You're just going to click request clearance and press send. It's sending. It's sent. And then a few moments later, you're going to receive back the squat code. And there it is. And then there's the ATC squat code. It's 43. One, three, I'm going to Wilco that because that means I've acknowledged and will comply. And now I'm just going to go to my pilot uh, or my uh, simulator. And I'm going to type 4313, turn on my transponder to altitude, and there we go. That's all I have to do. And that's currently all that is operational within the CPDLC. If I send a level request, for example, and I'll show you 310, and I just want to climb, um, see so yeah, a pilot's discretion, send. I'm going to get a message back that says it's not able to process that. KUSA is unable to receive this type of message at this time. Consider sending a free text message. So that's currently what is implemented. Um, I hope this helps uh, users to understand the CPDLC system a little bit more. Expect more videos to come in the future on the new functionality as we deploy them. Thanks for your time.